uh, Waigo, I think it doesn't matter uh, where you move the SGR uh, business to, whether you move it to Kenya Railways or back to Kenya Ports Authority. It's irrelevant. Uh, the, uh, if, you, if you buy something that is worth a billion for five billion, it will never make economic sense. It doesn't matter what you do. So at the end of the day, it's just, you know, moving uh, the business from one parastatal to the other. Uh, it's all the same government. It, what is ha the, the, the problem we have with the solution for the SGR is, has to be political. It cannot be economic. There is no economic solution to the SGR. You can do whatever you want to do. You will never get a return on investment or uh, anything, uh, you know, good out of the, the, the railway because simply it's overpriced. You know, it was supposed to cost maybe $1.5 billion. It cost, I don't know, $4, four billion or even more. Now, you can take it anywhere you want. You're not going to make an economic sense out of it. The best solution is a political solution, I think, and I, um, I, 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 my, my, my uh, personal view is that uh, the president and his team go to China, sit down with the Chinese and say, guys, this, is a mis this was a mistake. You were part of the mistake. You accepted those terms. You knew it was not going to work. Let's negotiate. Maybe convert it to PPP and take it off the government's uh, you know, books. That way you can get uh, fiscal space. And let me tell you the truth. Uh, Dr. Tari can also maybe jump in later. You will not get the fiscal space you need to talk, you know, you, you need to uh, fund all these funds you're talking about. You're talking about the Hustler Fund, you're talking about so many funds, you're talking about so many things that you promised. You are not going to get that fiscal space unless you deal with the railway issue. The railway is eating a lot of dollars uh, from the government. And unless you solve that, I mean, from January next year, I think you'll be paying 800, uh, in January, you'll be paying about $800 million. Just imagine what that does to uh, our reserves. I mean, uh, the, 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 the little uh, foreign currency uh, remittances and, and inflows we get, a lot of it uh, is going to be consumed by uh, a project like the railway. So you have to deal with the railway. And I think that has to be a priority for the, the current government. They have to go and do something about it. If you don't, it doesn't matter whether you take it to Kenya Railways or you can even take it if you want to, you know, uh, Kenya, Kenya Pipeline or anywhere. Mm -hmm. You will just be yeah, beating about the bush. Since you referenced uh, Dr. Uh, Gashie, let me allow him to, to jump in on this, Dr. Gashie. Uh, there was a, I think there was a plan in the Kenya Kwanzaa Manifesto on the SGR, but he says, listen, doesn't matter what you do. I, I don't agree with him. You don't agree with him? No, he's a good brother of mine. I don't agree with him because what we need about uh, SGR is economic solution. We, we cannot have uh, a railway that comes from Nairobi or what we call hinterland, hinterland from hinterland to Mobasa empty because it cannot be sustained by passenger services. So we must have goods that we must export. And I think Kenya Kwanzaa plan, there's a plan around diversion, the industrial park, the other industry. We need to look at our uh, productivity agriculture. We need to export. And that's why I think, uh, I, I think it's the deputy president who said that one of the key parameter of performance for our envoy is how much market they create for our goods. And our goods can only be carried from this side of the city or of the country through Lerui. So we must, we, we have no excuse. We must have, we must produce so that the Lerui becomes viable. How, how long do you think that would take? But uh, uh, sorry, to, to so, find... sorry, Daktari, go, sorry to go jump ahead, in, Daktari. Then, how are you then I'll come to you. Uh, sorry, Daktari, how are you going to force an ambassador who sits in Geneva? Uh, how is he going to force exports? I mean, there are international rules, there are trade rules. I heard what the deputy president said, but all our ambassadors and, and embassies are already engaged in economic diplomacy. That's something I personally also do uh, with the embassy. Uh, as a private citizen, I 
I always go out as an ambassador for Kenya to do that. But you cannot tell an ambassador, I will give you KPIs, you are in Geneva or Berlin or somewhere, and if you don't meet these targets, uh, you're coming back home. I think that was a bit uh, crazy. And coming back to the railway, yes, I agree with you, but I mean, I said you, you, it does not, it, the, the immediate uh, thing that you have to do has to be political, not economic solution. There is no economic, uh, it doesn't matter what you export, it will never make sense, uh, Dr. Tari. And, and, and if you have to uh, reach a level of exports to even break even, it, it's going to be so many years. And during those years, it's going to drain uh, your, your, your reserves. So at the end of the day, mm -hmm. you have to find a solution. Yes, it could, it could have an economic solution but not in the nature that it is now, because you have to take it probably off the government's uh, books, uh, talk to the Chinese, and they convert it to uh, PPP, and uh, maybe even sell it to, uh, you know, uh, uh, privatize it, uh, if you can get good uh, buyers, uh, very rich people from outside the country, and they, and they can maybe make sense out of it. But the government will never make sense out of it economically. Let, me get, a, about let me get an Im immediate okay. response. Yeah, uh, uh, let okay. me go, go ahead, and then Dr. Um, Mbithi, I'll need to get here from you as well. Well, well I think uh, when I talked about our diplomatic mission, well, here you know there is what we call the commercial and business attaché, mm -hmm. who are seated in uh, all our missions. And that is their brief that they need to be selling uh, what we have in Kenya. Uh, not physically looking for market, but also lobbying for that. And uh, I don't know why he shall picked on Geneva, <laughs> but uh, we, we have Uganda here, who we trade uh, most uh, than any other. We have Tanzania, we are looking at the EAC, we are looking at the new African uh, uh, perspective. That I, I keep saying I visited Ghana some time, and I, I bought tea from Egypt. And uh, there is no one single tree in Egypt. What they do, they buy from Kenya, they pack, they sell to Ghana. Mm -hmm. So I was taking uh, a product of Kenya uh, via Egypt. So I think those are the discussions that we need to look at. That, so that how do we do with external markets? Are we silent? What is our commercial attaché doing there? They need to, uh, to sell our products. They need to lobby for favorable terms of, of uh, business, uh, including a uh, body of uh, trade, the tariff, and tariffs. So that's what I was... Uh, that's what you were alluding to. Uh, alluding are you to. concerned about the time frames? The Chinese are knocking on our doors as early as next year for those repayments, and yet some of the things you're talking about will take time to implement. How, how do you balance those? But you see, what will happen is that we'll continue selling the debts, and that, that, that is true, whether we are selling or not, and whether even if we didn't have transition we still be uh, paying our obligations. But that's what we're calling the long term. That by the fifth year or the fourth year, we need to have moved from point A to B. And if we, if we don't do that, then we'll have a problem uh, paying the debt for the lady. And uh, otherwise, and he said, uh, we'll not have a return of, invest of inf investment. And even we are struggling to have even a break even for the same. So we must, uh, I keep saying we, we must be disruptive in our thinking and how, disruptive. Yeah, on how we approach on business. Okay, Can't jump in, Doc. Is it economic? Is it political? What is it? I think it's both. Um, I, I tend to agree more with uh, Dr. Waria, what he's saying. Uh, we need, first of all, to approach it from a political point of view. Um, the issue of trade is much more complicated because uh, what we are doing with the railway is the goods, most of the, the goods, uh, I mean, the, the trains is to bring the imports, but to take the exports is where the challenge is. So the issue of production comes in. But also to reach the market, the market access becomes a big issue because there are issues of, of, of not only uh, non-tariff barriers, but also tariff barriers, issues of trade facilitation, issues of standards, issues of SPSS, and especially with regards to our main exports, which are agricultural. Those ones may not be sorted out in a matter of months because they need an infrastructure investment by the government of Kenya to ensure that the standards are met, to ensure that if it is fish or whatever products, and especially the ones that require strict uh, international standards, we are able to meet them. So uh, for me, it's, it's both approaches. Uh, we need political in the short run um, because to increase production and to meet the needs of international trade is, is a challenge, which countries, including Kenya and other countries,